Okay, so let's look at a little bit of Python and crypto. In this presentation, we'll look at the LGAML public key encryption method. So what are the methods that we can use to implement uh, public key encryption? So remember with public key encryption, what we have is uh, Bob and Alice. And Bob has a public key and a private key. And the same for Alice. So if Alice wants to send Bob some encrypted content, then Bob sends over his public key. Alice will then encrypt with that public key, send it to Bob, and Bob will read it with his private key. Another thing that we do with inside uh, our public key encryption method is that we use the private key to sign. So if Bob uses his private key to encrypt something, he sends it over to Alice, and then Alice uses his public key to be able to decrypt this thing and prove that Bob was the signer of a message. So that's the two main things that we uh, create. This is what's called a signature, and the other one is what's called our normal en encryption. So what are the techniques that we use to be able to create our public key encryption? Well, one of the first methods that was created is called the RSA method. And with the RSA method, we take two prime numbers, P and Q. We multiply them together to create N. If P and Q are large enough, such as uh, we create a 1024-bit value of N, then it's actually extremely difficult to be able to factorise back into P and Q. If we can, we will have cracked uh, the RSA encryption then we end up with an E value and N and a D value for the decryption N. When we encrypt, we take the message. When we encrypt to create a cipher, we take our message and raise it to the power of E and then take mod of N. To decipher, we take the cipher, raise it to the power of D take mod n again, and uh, we can then decrypt our cipher. So the difficulty here is the factorising back into prime numbers. The second method that, uh, that we have that's uh, fairly typical is to use uh, elliptic curves. So with the elliptic curve method, what we have is an elliptic curve, looks maybe probably a bit like that. And we take a point on the elliptic curve, and we'll call that point G. That's an X and a Y value. And then what we do is we, we create a, a private key called N, and we add the points together N times. So then this gives us another point on the elliptic curve called P. And we typically define that P is equal to NG. So P is the public key, G is the generator point, and N is the private key. And because of the difficulty of this as a problem, it's not possible to find that N, even though we know G and P, those two, two points. So remember that this is g plus g plus g n times. Whenever we add one point onto another point in an elliptic curve, we always get another point on the elliptic curve. So we will always end up with a point here. The equation looks a bit like this. And a typical one is to use uh, that is zero, and we end up with uh, with this y squared is equal to x cubed plus seven. So that's elliptic curve uh, methods, and 
it's often the, the default when we're looking at uh, things like signatures, especially within Bitcoin and blockchain and so on. But another alternative uh, uses a discrete logarithms. And discrete logs involves taking a logarithm, such as g to the power of x. So let's look at the LGAMO encryption method. So we start off by using a value, a prime number, and we'll call that prime number P. We then uh, create a generator value G, and I'll explain how we get that value in a little minute. After this, we create our private key X. So this is our private key and shouldn't be shared by, to, with anyone. We then calculate y, which is equal to g to the power of x mod p. Our private, our public key then becomes p, y, and g. So Bob will send this to Alice. Alice receives this and now she will come up with a message. And she also picks a random value k. She then uh, creates two values a which is equal to g to the power of x mod p and also b which is equal to y to the power of k mod p. This is the cipher value, the value of a and b. So she then sends that back to Bob, and Bob will pick it up as two values, a and b. He then takes m is equal to b divided by a to the power of x, and again we take mod p. And in this way we should be he should be able to get the message back again. So how does that work? Well it works because and we just take that back. So if we just recap from there, we have two values. of a is equal to g to the power of k mod p and b is equal to y to the power of k mod p. The message is equal to b over a to the power of x mod p. So that's equal to y to the power of k because of this here, divided by a, which is g to the power of x, to the power g, g to the, the power of k to the power of x mod p. Then, if we remember, y is actually equal to g to the power of x to the power of k and g to the power of k to the power of x is this part here. And because of the magic of logarithms, we end up with g to the power of x and then g to the power of x. And so I missed the, the the actual B value has an M in it. These two cancel out, so we end up with M. Okay, so in this way the two values here we were 
uh, able to then take uh, the B uh, M over A to the power of X and end up with the value of the message. Okay, so this is what we end up with. Uh, Bob selects a G value and a prime number and then selects a private key. The value of Y becomes G to the power of X G to the power of X mod P. So the public key is this here and he sends that to Alice. Alice then creates a message and a random value and then computes A and P. So she computes G to the power of K mod P and Y the values she received to the power of K times the message mod P. And Bob, Bob receives the A and B value and works out the message uh, by B over A to the power of X. And as we just saw, that's Y to the power of K times M upon A to the power of X. I'll just leave off the mod P just now. So y to the power of k is g to the power of x to the power of k divided by the a, which is g to the power of k to the power of x. And then that's equal to times the message. That's equal to g to the power of x k and g to the power of x k here times the message so we end up with only the message in the end so here's some python code to be able to implement that so all i've done is taken a message which is entered through the command line argument prime number here and a, a g value uh, we then create a random x value and work out y was g to the power of x mod p. Then we take a random k, work out a and b. And then for the message, we take b divided by, that's the inverse of a to the power of x. So it's, it's what's called an inverse mod function. It's the inverse of a to the power of x mod p. And there's the results that we get here. There's the value that we've we've put in and we get that back as a result and there's the cipher value. So how do we actually pick the value of G giving a, a value of, of, uh, of P? Well what we do is we we have a cyclic group for each prime numbers and within inside that group we can select uh, certain values of, uh, of G. So it's all to do with if we take g to the power of x mod p. What we want is for every value of x up to p minus 1 to give a unique output. It's called a cyclic group. It goes around the group and then we'll come back again. So if we try these values here and we take a prime number of 7, and we try a g to be 2, we can see here that we don't actually have a cyclic group and that it repeats uh, very quickly. So the value of 2 cannot be used as a g value for 7. But if we see here, then this is a cyclic group because we go up and we select all the values here and then we repeat again. So 3 is a possible G value for 7, 4 isn't, 5 is. So we want to look at that code. Um, let's see the Python code to implement that. So there is our 7 value, and there's for 11, so we can see we can use 2, 6, 7 and 8. 
And he, this is the simple Python code that we can use to be able to get this as a, a result. Okay, so the code for, for our Python implementation is, is here. The one thing to notice is this inverse. This is how we do the divide. We do an inverse mod p. And this is the uh, method that will actually uh, do that. And it's using the extended Euclidean algorithm to do the inverse. Okay, so that's how we pick a value of g given uh, a p value. We need to make sure that we have a cyclic group. Okay, so that's been an introduction to the LGAMO public key encryption method. Sorry about that.